There she is. Dumb as a rock. <sighs> do, do, do. Child, you are emotionally intelligent. I probably need that. I feel, I feel like this is a detective game. Brain power. It's well rounded. Probably for the mess. What is this? Set my base at four, or does it add four? Three plus, oh, I think it's three plus whatever. Nothing. Only warm, primordial blackness. Your conscious ferments in it. No larger than a single grain of malt. You don't have to do anything anymore. Wives are contained within it. You got it, sweet brother. Nothing upon nothing upon nothing. I know you do, baby. I know. Coming right up, sir. Smooth passy. What the fuck is going on? Do you really? You wouldn't like it if I told you what was back there. Why'd you think you had to bludgeon yourself into oblivion? 
Or did you not sense yourself marinating? Hoard so much on yourself. Got a bit carried away, did we, Chef? Oh, Chef. Fear and apprehension. You should ask yourself there first. There's this giant ball there. An evil ape. And the evil apes are juking it out on the ball. You're one of them. It's basically all just evil apes juking it out on a giant ball. You can't even make out it's a ball when you're juking it out. It's that large. Infinitesimally small. Dying for resources is just a stupid expression you picked up somewhere. The part of the presentation you want to take home with you is this. You have to beat the other evil apes in the face. Or you lose. Yes, it is. And you drowned in that sadness a long time ago. You lost. Not what I was expecting, but all right. Oh. Oh, boy. are clinking in the pocket of your flare cut pants. It says whirling in rags on the aluminium key ring. There is a single key on the ring. The number one is etched on it. It should open the door. above a bent and broken sink. In a fierce discharge of masculine energy, someone has ripped half the faucet off. Hot water sprays from the base and steam covers the mirror. You cannot see yourself. Suddenly, you realize you have no memory of the face that awaits you there, underneath the soft face. As you slowly reach your head, abort. You clearly have not thought this through. You won't like what you see there, and you will never unbecome it. What? Behold. You have no idea who this thing is, do you? Too late. You clearly have rigor mortis on your face. Oh wait, is that an expression? Are you trying to make an expression with that face? Why? Please stop. It's horrible. You're scaring yourself. Oh my God, you can't stop. It's like it's not even voluntary anymore. What does it even mean? What is the emotion you're trying to convey? You are correct. Like the rest of you, it comes from a bad place somewhere in the past. The fuck?
Might have to go away from the uh, controller here. This fan has two chain switches. One ends in a tiny fan, the other in a light bulb. A truly horrific necktie is somehow, or has it been consigned there as punishment? You feel as though this creature is your friend and wants to reattach itself to your neck so that you may continue your adventures together in this strange world. You reach out to grab the tie, but what's this? Diffuse, radiating chest pain. Doom comes over you. This is bad. Feels like what? sharp stones grinding in your chest and keeping you for quite a long, still ongoing. Finally, the pressure recedes. You find yourself covered in cold screw. The blades come squeaking to a halt. It should be easier to reach the tie now. You swoop up and catch the tie. Snap. It's released from the blade. Warning, warning, the necktie. What you have in your hand is a fantastically colorful tie with four or five different patterns. Oh, hair of the dog, baby. The window stands broken in its frame. Cold wind blows in. The morning light hurts your eyes. It's hazy, but you see the ocean and some war-torn buildings. The shards face outward. Whatever broke this window came from the inside. A fine web of scarring covers the back of your right hand. More likely a projectile than a held object. There are no fragments on the floor from pulling a tool back in after impact. It is too large for a bullet, yet too small for a piece of furniture. You're looking for something heavy. The single green shoe you found fits the hole almost as well as your foot. It would have also been heavy. Congratulations. You smashed the window. The cool wind gushes in. Your toe. Alright, let's go get this fucking shoe. a cigarette to her lips. Uh, no. There's only one solution to this. You're a businessman. Because you're a police officer, sir. I'm not... Unless you've been shitting us all this time. You've been here for three days on a couldn't say. In truth, so far, mostly drinking. Of course. Be careful, officer. They don't like the police around here. She looks back at you, a light. Goodbye. Taking notes, taking 
notes. Yeah, forty cents. Nineteen fifty one money, that's like a dollar fifty. loneliness comes over you. Everybody in the world is doing something without you. The door is closed. stands behind the counter, inspecting a stuffed seabird. As you approach, he gives you a sideways glance that was disdain in his eyes. Even now he's purposely ignoring you. A competent work of taxidermy, the white and brown seabird lies among piles of coasters and drying mugs. One of its looks like the bird was ripped off the shield that was used to mount it. Something about it makes you feel bitter. Look, your buddy is over there. Why don't you go and talk to him, okay? He pretends not to hear you, concentrating on the bird instead. Should be a flash or badge button at all times. shouldn't keep your colleague waiting. Oh, he's fine. <laughs> On the counter, rolled out of his open hand, you see a blister pack of headache medicine. Does not mind. You've just picked up some magnesium. That sugary black rum stain on the counter makes you teary eyed with joy. It's almost touching how syrupy and sticky it is. How long have you been up already? Oh, excuse me. Do you have something better to do than lust? Speckled man in an orange bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor. It's a fun word. Looks like he's waiting for someone. You, as you approach, he narrows his eyes and extends his hand in greeting. If an assault were launched on this building right now, if the windows came crashing down and the whole world descended upon you, this man would hurl himself in death's way to save you. You are sure of this. Hello. I'm Kim Kitsuragi, Lieutenant, Precinct 57. You must be from the 41st. You realize 
He's wait. This is your chance to come up with a really good name for yourself. Get creative. Conceptualize. Concentration makes you squint your eyes. Your name should be deep gold and orange, like a forest fire looming on the horizon, but mixed with the stench of liquor rising from your breath. You're two steps closer to it, but there are still many to go. Okay, then. It <laughs> looks like we had a little scheduling error on Sunday. Saturday, too, actually. Have you had time to talk to the manager here? If you don't mind, we should talk to him again. Ask him for a rundown of the area. Now that I'm here as well. I understand the scene is all back, right? Yeah, back. It also wouldn't hurt to assure him the police are finally here. In full force, I mean. Have you mapped out the initial interviews? Good. But even if you haven't, we'll have time for that after we take a look. Have you removed the dead body from the tree? So, the body is... This is the first time you detect a weariness in the lieutenant's voice. It is of... Where it has been hanging for seven days straight. We should go there as soon as we are done talking to the owner. After you, officer. If you're about to embark on an investigation, shouldn't you have a badge? You mean you don't have a badge? Losing your identification card is a serious matter. My vehicle has a shortwave. You can use it to report your badge missing. I advise you to try to locate it as quickly as possible. But getting the body down should still... Lieutenant Kitsuragi is now in your party. You can talk to him whenever by interacting with Let's go talk to this fucker. The man with the unimpressive beard notices you approaching. He drops the ledger he was holding and turns to the Mr. Gart, right? Yes. I am Kim Kitsuragi from Prison 57. This is an inter-district investigation, so joining me from Prison 41? Are you kidding me? <laughs> right. Now, I know it took us a while to arrive at the scene. It also took you a while to call us and report the dead body. It was you who placed the call, yes? No, I only just got here. It was probably Sylvie who called you. She usually works the bar here. I'm only temporarily taking over her duties. Do you have her number? As a matter of fact, I do. You said you just got here. From where? Are you a local? What, of Martinez? No, I live in Jamrock. I only sometimes come here to keep an eye on the place. This is just one of the many, many cafeterias I manage. But you still know your way around, yes? Yes, I know where some things are, but as I said, I don't live here. I just used to work here. And I'm not going to start working here again, if that's what you think. I didn't imply that. Detective. I have everything. You? Yes, yes. He means, do you have questions for me, like a police officer would? She went away because none of your business. Uh, that's, not, that's not passing the vibe check. Extra fine. She went away because none... Extra fine. <laughs> Let's go. Not so fast. You owe me 130 real. No one is saying the multi pattern necktie you found tied to the ceiling fan can talk. No one. It must be merely im. Let's bail! Time to push the eject button! Sounds like a responsibility! You don't like those! Oh! You don't owe me shit. Well, officer, you're right. 
You don't owe me shit. We do not need to assert ourselves here. We only need instructions from him. This is the proprietor, remember? You know, I get this all the time. Some hobo comes in here or some backpacking asshole off the boat. The next day, when they can't make their fees, they get aggressive. I just never thought I'd be in this. Who does that clown think he is? Arrest him! What are you, brain damaged? Money is what grown up people use to pay for things. Things like this hostel room, or, or eight bottles of potent blend, and nine packs of royal extra. We use it for everything, really. There's a shuffle of nylon as Lieutenant Kitsuragi looks for something in the pockets of his orange bomber. That's cop four. I haven't offered to pay because I don't have any money either. I'm sorry, but he has to pay. I can't let him stay here any longer if he doesn't. If he doesn't have the money, by Officer, maybe you are better off working this from home for now. You live in Jamrock, right? It's not that far away. I'm sorry I couldn't help more. You should take this up with your station. I have a shortwave radio in my car. Good luck. You should totally sing karaoke here. The first chance you get. Your emotions need to be expressed. People need to know your vast oceanic soul. Utterly. And it needs through a PA system by other people. You have not yet stumbled on the right lamentation, but it's out there. It'll come to you. You will wreak havoc with it. Don't worry. It'll definitely be journey. Serves them right. You have to find something trap. It's left. By the way, where is home? The address is coming up blank. And this place, sure, but you've been at this hostel cafeteria for only three nights. Where were you before? You ha Why did you say that? The old thesaurus comes up empty. Maybe you should ask the lieutenant. No. But isn't that an expression, not a place? A saying, up on Marvel Hill, a great high place. One that is impossible to climb. That doesn't sound like somewhere you can stay if you run out of money. You can try. Run some addresses in your head when you get the time. This button looks new. It's probably not connected yet. RCM in Martinez. 
What can I help you with? Of course. What can I help you with? Of course. Where to? Oh, that. That's right there. In the yard. She's relieved someone has come for it. Finally. There's the pier, the Cape Side apartment buildings, some more tenements. Not a lot, really. The harbor gate, some kind of commotion, I think. I don't follow the local politics. Some shops and a bridge. The canal bridge leads to the coast, but it's broken, I think. Just coast. There's a, it's just water. No, actually, I think they call it the Martinez Inlet. There are some islands in the bay. No problem. Of course. Her gloves. You get the feeling that you need them. You have a dead body to deal with after all. Oh. There it is. Kuno's got this! If there ever was such a thing as an ugly kid, then this is it. He's almost exquisite in his ugliness, like a gremlin. Oh yeah, not a comfy Kuno! Where's the sort of shield, Kuno? Oh, I see him. Can't talk, pig! Shit's coming up strong! Throwing rock! Shit coming up strong. That sounds good. Joyous. You should hang out with this kid and see what that juicy shit is all about. <sighs> Will not be hanging out with the 10-year-old? Yeah, Kuno! Ride the lightning, Kuno! Ride the lightning. Kuno's rising at sea. The rake, Kuno! He should throw the rake! The fuck? Does Kuno know what a rake is? Kuno's not a gardener. Can I punch this kid? Boys, an inconspicuous pile of the roofing material eat tonight. It's nothing. Someone just left some roofing material slanted against an old shack. This trash container is locked. There's something in there, not necessarily connected to the case, but still. The body is downwind from here. Maybe you prefer the smell of garbage to the smell of death. Trash, food waste from the cafeteria. They lock these containers to keep the derelicts from flocking in. Could be evidence too. Mm-hmm. We could try using a pry bar. There's one in my motor carriage, or... Or we could ask for a key from the manager of the whirling in rags. He probably has one. Can't you see I'm throwing rocks? The fuck are you talking about? He's calling us f Kuno! He says we're fucking each other! Alright, entertain the Kuno. Show me what you got. What you got there? What you got, huh? Show me what you got. Shit, old pig. What's your question? Don't tell the pig shit, Kuno. If I were to want to waste my time, which I do not, 
I would ask them who he is, how he got there, and the usual. Probably climbed. Kuno was busy down the road when that shit went down. You heard Kuno? Kuno wasn't even in Martinez. Kuno wasn't in Revachol. Kuno wasn't regional. I don't know. Some fucking... Mesco, or, or... I don't know. Some other place. Night City. Kuno was in fucking Night City. Yeah. Kuno didn't smoke him if that's Kuno's fucking. Kuno uses the fucking for target practice. This kid is terrible. Just a couple of pigs sniffing around in the dirt. That yeah, you tell the faggoty Kuno. You're testing Kuno. Get lost. Right, pig. This is where Kuno plays with his little wooden choo choo. What do you want with it? Look at that fucking shit. You're trying to get Kuno killed. Fuck does Kuno know? Kuno's not a. The lieutenant takes a quick note. It it's a trap, Kuno! Don't climb it, Kuno! Yeah, whatever. Kuno doesn't give a shit. Kuno does. Kuno, the pig's getting pretty close to me. Come to snuff my shit out, I think. Looks like it's time for me to go, Kuno. Pigs come to take me in. I'm going away for a long, long time, Kuno. Going away for life. What's going on there? Fuck are you trying to pull, pig? You don't want to fuck with me. I got my hands bloody. I'm not here, pig. You're not seeing this. Who the fuck are these children? You can still see the top of her hat. Can I get back to her? Fuck these kids out here. Before you stands a motor carriage. The bodywork is covered in blue and white livery. Bearing vapor emanates from the large engine on the... This must be the infernal machine that tore you from oblivion. In the cabin, you are welcomed by a set of steering levers, a radio microphone on a hook, a pull-out toolbox under the seat, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. A metallic drawer slides out from under the seat and clicks into play. Take what you need, officer. It's going to be a long case. And He's clearly a little protective of his tools. But what can you do? Work is work. The pry bar feels nice and cold in your hand, useful for opening all sorts. Of the handles are long, it's robust, lets you see things. The pull-out toolbox slides back into its nest. Preheater gauge costs. This trash container is locked. The sliding lid has a padlock that says, whirling in rags. Can I find my other shoe? This trash container is locked. The sliding lid has a padlock that says, 
boiling in rags. Can I fucking pop this kid with a crowbar? I'll die before I squeal, pig. I come from the woods, Kutavitu. You don't want to go there with me. You don't, don't be traumatizing here. Get the fuck out of here. This Postla Vantorie mail collection box has been heavily vandalized with graffito. A close. The box seems eat shit pig, fucked by the coon, and Saint Jean with a crown have been scribbled on it. Jenny is a whore and best set mailbox. The mail collection box seems cathartic. Thankfully, them. So do you. You shudder. Then you... little cadence. He seems to be making it up as he goes. It's the jam, my man. It's a traffic jam for the ages. Harbor gates up the street are shut tight. No explanation given. Workers on strike. Meanwhile, we're all stuck here in long haul limbo for days upon... Yeah, yeah. It's official. He too agrees. This is the antechamber of the after. Feels like forever. Like I was born on this here roundabout and this was all I ever knew. Just me and the metal and the tires, the oil and the fumes of mazook. Yeah, imagine. It's been a whole week already. Behind the laugh, however. So tell me, what do you need? He ain't one of us drivers. I know that. All accounted for. Otherwise, I haven't really asked. It's easy to see he's telling the truth. He's kept his nose out of the dark stuff. The man taps his fingers rhythmically. It's like, whatever's going on over at the docks. Workers got a blockade set up, making demands, no way in. Some pretty wild stuff, I hear. Like a giant new power crane in half the company? I forget what exactly. I've heard talk there's a company rep in town, too. Like, a strike negotiator type. Ah, yes, from the Wild Pines. We'll meet her soon enough, I'm sure. Anything else? Us lorry drivers. Cam, your nurse. You still hang around here waiting for this mess to end. Most have scurried off some to get drunk or high. Or laid. Not that I blame. Not my thing. Chasing transient pleasures is a drag these days. I prefer the examined life now. Thinking, reflecting, observing. What's better than chasing transient pleasures? The more transient, the better. When one's ended, you can get onto the next one. Oh, high-grade narcotics, illegal firearms. Time to arrest him. Can't even get a few jokes past you, my man. I've got another haul of foul cargo. Mostly sporting goods, track. They usually get shipped to Grad in the Occident. Though we've been making headway in the Il Moran market lately. The man taps his fingers rhythmically. Don't be a stranger. <laughs> Does anyone see my shit? 
shoe. I'm afraid you and I are pawns in a, a pissing competition. His disdain is clear. This man would not use such an expression. You don't know. <laughs> I assumed you were in on it. Better still than an imbecilic cop off. It's just stupidity. We shouldn't waste any more time on it. If you want my take, ask me after we've inspected the victim. Was there anything else you wanted to know about the case? Good. Can I inspect this fucking bag? looks at you with bulging white eyes. The face around them does not look human. It's swollen and ready to burst. You seem to be holding your breath. A cargo belt twists his neck at an unnatural angle. The body below appears stiff. It's letting out an ungodly rot. The smell seeps in even through your clenched nostrils. <sighs> Active decay. It's okay to throw up, officer. No one is judging. He's about to blow! Cop's gonna blow, Kuno! name for a hair salon. Doesn't bode well for anyone's hair. All you hear is static, but no one answers the call. You ring the doorbell, but nothing happens. You wait for a minute or two, but all you get from the call box is looks like someone has melted half the plastic off with a lighter. The doorbell, you hear static from the intercom speaker. It sounds as if someone has picked up the receiver. You press the number sign on the keypad that terminates the call. Twelve name cards on the call box read. Silence. No one's home at Fortress Accident. Silence. No one answers the doorbell. Silence. No one answers your call. Nothing happens after you ring the doorbell. They don't want to talk to you. You're all suspicious. Hello, 
sir. Step right in. The store is open. Are you interested in a new and exciting book? Okay, sir. I'll try to answer any questions you have. My name is Annette, sir. My mum, her name is Plaisance. She owns the store. She's inside, minding the register, or organising the stock. Feel free to step in and browse our wares. I'm signalling that the store is open. Otherwise people might not know. They'd miss out on the crime, romance and biographies of fate. A sudden gush of wind turns the pages of the books on the counters. She covers her face, smiling. But she's cold. Kind of you to offer, sir. What could you do to help her anyway? Oh no, no, sir. I'm happy to help Mum by luring in customers. Besides, I have some hot juice in my vacuum bottle to keep warm. and biographies of famous people. Be welcome, and please take responsibility for the energy you bring into this space. I am the proudest owner of our little shop of culture. Annette, yes, my daughter. I hope she wasn't slacking off again with her nose in science fiction. Tell me, was she at her pe- Wonderful! Did you talk to her? Great! On a scale of 1 to 10, how compelled would- Her opinion of her daughter depends on how well she lured you into the store. My precious, her dedication brings joy to my heart. If you have children, I hope they turn out as great as my Annette. You must be kidding. There's nothing like that happening. Good, sir. What does a young child do with money anyway? No, I save it for her as a fun. Indeed. Are we done with the jokes now? Yes, we've had quite enough fun here. Right. The woman before you scans the store, her shoulders rigid and tense. Every now and then, she nudges her. Then why are you talking to me? Everything is on the shelves to browse. Don't you feel compelled to buy anything? See those shelves there? Go, be drawn. Everything is on the shelves. Take a look yourself. She's attempting to mentally direct you towards the shelves. She only wants you to buy the goods. She doesn't care about the books. Truth be told, not really. My sister brings in most of the goods. I'm sure it's all very literary stuff, but you don't learn about the important things in life from fabricated stories. The truth is available if you just know where to look, and you have to open and free your mind to understand. She smiles and nods, seeming. The display rack is brimming with worn paperbacks, featuring an extremely muscular, sword-wielding bub. Rows and rows of Yim Dalamin blur your vision. You make out the display rack before you is burdened under piles of Man from Yim Dalman novels. A twinge at the back of your head makes you flinch. Your eye starts twitching. Your hand reaches toward a book with glossy cover art of the very muscular man from Hyamdal. In she's laughing at him. Belittling between the throne and the Hyamdala man lies a bonfire, casting shadows on the wall. The shadow of the woman's headdress looks like a pair of devil horns. The title reads, The display rack before you is burdened under piles of man from Hyamdal novels. <laughs> you
You see a set of tattered curtains blocking the way to another room. A strange cage-like trinket dangles from the curtains. Excuse me, officer. The back room is strictly for employees only. You see some kind of charm. An irregular polyhedron assembled from bones, sticks, and straw. This is a traditional Seminese ward, meant to provide protection against ill luck. The inhabitants of Il de Fantôme, the Seminine Islands down south, aside from poking at it suspiciously, there is nothing else to do with the fish head charm at this time. The curtains remain shut. Just as you're about to pull apart the curtains, the petrified voice. Sir, don't touch that. I told you it's off limits for the customers. Parapsychologically speaking, we're done if you decide to open them. I won't be held responsible. She looks away, mumbling. Why is everyone always messing with the curtains? Why can't they just buy books like normal people? Why? It's not like anyone was killed there. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be so impolite. Just please don't go there. I can't allow that. You'll only make things worse. No! Please just talk to me, officer. Come here and- There is something mysterious about the curtains. The curtains, tattered with age and covered in dust, hang before you, as if taunting you. Hello again, esteemed officer, and welcome to Crime Rem- I already told you, it's just a storage room for employees. I don't understand why it's so important. Just let it go, officer. Go buy some goddamn books. You're supposed to be... It's just for decoration. Okay, fine. It's just because this place is cursed. Just like everyone said. Are you happy now, officer? Happy that you've ruined everything? The curse is so much worse than you could imagine. It's a disease eating at the very foundation. It's the curse of financial distress, of ruin and bankruptcy. Didn't, didn't that curtain just move? But officer, there's nothing natural about entire companies by declaring curtain. bankruptcy. I'm there's something wrong with this building. I can tell Sounds familiar. She nudges her glasses. Anxious and tense. Most certainly not. I do psychic arts. Sounds right down our alley. Time to fire up the old lie machine. No. The lieutenant looks at you. Wait, you've got this. Just go with it. This is elegant. Stop being such a fussy prude. You can't convince her without lies. You're called... what? What is this, a joke? He turns away, not before you can see a small hint of a smile. He's struggling to not... Sir, I really don't have time for your jokes. The situation is very serious. Go on, my The curtains, tattered with age and covered in dust. Yeah. You see a dimly lit room full of dusty furniture and trash. A doorway stands in the back, covered. I warned you, you're unleashing... Shut up. handle stands before you, covered in dozens, if not hundreds, of Seminese trinkets and charms. It appears to be locked. Only an echo. No one is there. <laughs> Alright. 
All right. Ow. Shoot. Whose moronic idea was it to just run through the door? Don't you know that things like that hurt? Are you all right? This looked pretty int- What is going on there? Are you really trying to break- I warn you, don't tempt the spirits, officer. Don't tempt the spirits or you'll damage the whole- It barely looks like you've done any damage to the door, however. It's- Fascist magic. Several maps have been attached to a bulletin board hidden inside the alcove. They're held up. The maps look old and faded. Your eye catches a map. It's not really a map. It's a tourist thing. A pick still. It's the north coast of a... V to the east. Rolling hills. Kudom. It's... It's so small. No. This is somewhere to be. This is all you have. But it's still something. Streets and sodium lights. The sky. The wood. I'm sorry, officer. The map of Martinez is the only one available. The other, they're quite valuable, though they might not look it. The map of Martinez is 90 cents, though. Yes, yes. Are you interested or not? Unfortunately, I only have 60 cents. It's an erotica without erotica. Come on, baby. Bullet holes, you say. Suspicious. Excuse me, have you seen the shoe? No shame. Whining about your back every time you bring out the measuring tape. Honey. You are a man with a fork in a world of soup. Please, <laughs> let's just try to enjoy the game, all right? I'll definitely be uh, using that in the future. I'm trying to, but you keep breaking my concentration. You're old. I can see that. We're both old. Now stop grabbing your ass like it's a girl. These manly men are playing balls. This is a ball game. Grab a ball and play it. Don't ask questions. That's the spirit. Don't even waste your breath asking about the game. They wouldn't know anyway. They're way past their prime. See? 
Your munching and complaining have ruined my concentration. Ah, mon dieu. The pain in my back is unbearable. I can't... I hope you pass out from it, you goddamn jellyfish. Oh, Men oh, like you are the reason this nation is sinking. Trying to throw something as close to a predetermined point as possible. Shush. Ignore them. They don't know what they're doing. They're old. You are letting down yourself and the team. Get in the damn game already. Eyes on the ball, Dinky. Good morning, coach. Sure, officer. I am Rene. Rene Arno. And my specially abled partner here is Gaston Martin. Unfortunately, I don't. <laughs> And like most of the locals, I have no qualms about assisting law enforcement. In Martinez, the union is the law. So can you really blame them? Cop is a pejorative term. I don't have a problem with policemen. On the contrary, I admire the effort to bring order to our streets. Hmm. If I knew, I would not be afraid to tell you. I simply... This is a man with a lot of past. But little present, and almost no future. Yes. The terrain here provides an interesting variety to a familiar game. I do. Fire from heavy artillery. Why what? Because that's what happens when communists hijack your country, execute your Communist. supreme leadership, and turn your capital into a slaughterhouse. You use heavy ordnance to clean up your home. Sadly, no. It was the foreigners who brought them to their knees. We fought valiant, should have fought dirty, like they did with their suicide sex cult propaganda and mad anarchist women strapped to shrapnel bombs. We didn't, though, and we lacked caliber. God bless him, but the suzerain's cannon simply weren't big enough. Because this place is a damn beachhead! And to soften the con- Yes! The uh, military was man. used as one of the three footholds in Revachel during Operation Deathblow in 08. The other two are off in Stella Maris and the Delta. This here is blood ground, where coalition boots first made and clean those rabbit dogs out. Blood ground? You got old René going there. Like he isn't hungry enough already. Damn right, son. They laid the fire of hell on the city before they stormed it. And it worked. The rest of the city got cleaned up, but Martinez they keep as a monument. And now the... Well, it's your own damn fault. You, we, the coalition, Revachol, whoever you want to blame. You don't even begin Jesus to truly Christ, understand guys. the players on the table. Thinking oh God, guys. opinions on these things. Present one. I'm sorry it had to be them. After eight years of fighting those hyenas, boiling cats for food and drinking piss in the mountains, I would have preferred if the right honorable King Guillaume returned to Revachal, or even if that damn clan Fussel had risen from the grave. This royal failure weighs heavily. Instead, all that is just, holy, and beautiful in the world was wiped away, and now it's neon signs with toothpaste ads everywhere. For this is just what the commies wanted. This was their plan all along. This is what they wanted to replace the role of the suzerain with. The suzerain is the king. Has everyone forgotten already? They forgotten already. It's no use talking to you. You were still in daddy's balls when it happened. When we took our last stand against the fifth and rode the cavalry straight into gunfire. That seems stupid.
Oh God, Jesus. Is that my shoe? Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out, a frequency tableau lights up, and a green button labeled the soft purr of electrical kittens. Radio waves cast fire. This is Precinct 57. Hello, Lieutenant. Hello, Alice. Please assist our colleague from the 41st Precinct here. I'm putting him on. This is Officer Alice Demetri, Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Just a second, Officer. Ten two, ten five. This is forty first. Uh, come in. A scrawny old man sits in a dusty cubicle, smoking, with a large white rectangle sewn on his vest. In front of him is a box-shaped apparatus with an array of wires and antennas. The man uses relay code. You've got this. You're a cop, and cops know relay code. I am a cop. I got this. 10-4, message received. 10-5, relay message. What's your status? 10-18, state your message, sir. Ten nine over. Ten four message received. This is a very serious situation. I need to ten. Is it him? What does he want? Says he lost his badge and needs to. He what? He lost his badge. Who lost his badge? Dick fucking Mullen. Who do you think? It's Officer Dick Mullen from the best seller, Dick Mullen and the Lost Identity. Dick Mullen is not your name. It's the name of a fictional detective who defend yourself immediately. They're laughing at you. Ten four, I hear you, officer. I'm just going to make a note here that you are in pursuit of your misplaced bad. Fuck me! Mac, come here! You've got to hear this! Dick Mullen lost What's going on? Super Carpe lost his badge. He lost his what? His badge. He lost his goddamn fucking badge. He asked you to please stop saying he lost his badge. Why? Did he find it? Sergeant Parson was wondering if you found your... Um, you don't have a comeback. Sorry. It's hard to think like that. He's not replying. Looks like he's still looking for it. 10-9, come again. I didn't get that. Over. New heights even for Captain Sober. Ask him. <laughs> Ask him if he's lost his... Sergeant Orson wants to know if you... Check your pockets. Check your... Holy fuck. You don't know where it is, do you? No. It's gone. Don't sweat it, Bratan! You don't need a gun to- 10-9, come in, officer. Did you get my question? We were wondering about your gun. Over. Come on, baby. Lying oh. over the phone. It's easy. Just say- He says he didn't. Thank God for that. That would have been a nightmare. I don't even- Losing his badge is bad enough. Tell him to find it, and fast. We can- We're all glad to hear you've not lost your gun, officer. You need further assistance. Over. Roger that. 10-10. Ten, ten. Over and out. 18 kilometers to the south, in the 41st Precinct's relay booth, a small crowd has gathered around communicating. The small room is filled with cigarette smoke, a buzz with laughter when Officer Judith Minow enters. What is going on here? Did something happen? What happened is my partner made contact, and it's not good. He's lost his badge. Mac, the torso Torson, 
is finger fucking his fist, laughing hoarsely and apparently telling some d Yeah, Mullen was fucked, all right. Sounded fu- Yeah, Max right. That was some- Enough! None of this is funny. It's fucking sad. That's what it is. We must help him. Yeah? How do you fucking plan to do that, huh? Get him out the drink? Go jogging with him? I just know we can't give up on him when he's at his weakest. He wouldn't. Mac, man the door. You know what he told me? I don't want to get better. I want to get worse. This shit does not leave this room. Not a word of this to the captain. Or anyone else. I guess I can hold up the report for a few days. Good. Okay, everybody. Nothing but a prank call here. Far north, on the other side of the motorway, the officer quietly hunches with his hand in the motor carriage. Conspicuous pile of the roofing material eat tonight. There he still is, looking right through you with his white eyes. The body below is entirely dedicated. The smell is repulsive. It pushes in from your mouth, more instant and more familiar. Feel a great force ringing from your stomach until a pool of vomit lies under your feet and your throat stings from the stomach acid. Yeah, Give okay, it. Okay. The hangover is clearly making this worse for you. You could use some ammonia to clear your head. There is Fritz nearby, east of the hostel. They usually have a small apothecary. If they don't, there's a greenhouse here, and a gardener with a wheelbarrow on the corner of the whirling in rags. If she works here, she might have some. Acquiring ammonia will provide a modifier to the white check. 
Modifiers make checks easier and allow you to retry them. Hello again, officer. How are things? Sure, I'm done with it. Go easy on that stuff. There are several footprints in the mud, left by work boots. Anywhere from six to twelve pairs have walked here. What do you think you are? A super detective? You're hungover. These are just dents, heavy workers' boots with reinforced toes, and isn't this something an industrial worker would wear? Not it. There, he still is, looking right through you with his white eyes. The body below is entirely dedicated to that corpse smell. Emitting it is the ammonia only makes it work. The second time, not so much. When the vomiting is done, your cheeks are wet with tears. That's gross. Get a hold of yourself. The weight is reassuring, like a crap. I've seen strong men turn themselves inside out for hours. You are facing tough odds here. Alcohol withdrawal makes it considerably harder. That's probably a good idea. Clear our heads. But before we can, you need to get your shit together. We should go talk to the locals. Find something else to do. What? You've gained a thought. When this dialogue is over, go to your thought cabinet and internalize. Give it half an hour. Get yourself together. Thought cabinet. woman does not greet you. She nods along to something on her radio. A photograph is clutched in her hands and there is a warm smile on her face. It's not creepy at all.
The photo, an ambrotype from the turn of the century, as golden as her smile. It's the warmth of a winter night's fire. Maybe she could give you comfort and shelter, some cigarettes and food money. Maybe she's your... Wait. She's just a distracted old woman. Better to leave her. Mm. A buck forty. Buck yeah. We're up to two dollars. Stay frosty, everyone. Cops are here. You here to fuck with us? Beat the honest worker down. Good. We're fighting for a cause here. Right to work! Right to work! Besides, we're not that different. It helps if people see us talking, cops and strike breakers together. Shows authorities are on our side. Builds confidence. Maybe you should ask them the questions, like, why we're not allowed to... We have families to feed, you piece of shit. So do we, Scott. We were promised work. We'd be in there, working, if the bastards hadn't shut the gates. Main gate's locked. Take heavy ordnance to bust it open and try to get in through the secretary's office. Doors locked. And I don't mean the scrawny mess punk either. I mean head measurer. Or whatever he is. Like civilized folk, you mean? These native fuck. It would be better for the neighborhood if you went home. At least for now. If you can't. No! They will give up eventually. Or get drunk. <sighs> Leave the button unguarded. Then, we charge. Have fun. <laughs> Union shits are on full strike. Don't think they're going to let you through the gates. I'm trying to meet their fat boss. I know nothing about a murder. The mention of a killing sends a barely noticeable shiver of tenseness through him. Interesting. What are you talking about? Yes. He's tense. Right to work! It's shameful. Cops doing nothing. You should bring back up, open up the gates for us. Blockading gainful employment for workers is a crime. We are not picking a side in this, just pity. Let us work! Honest men and women, with rights to work, to be useful. Not toys. We came here to help the harbor run smoothly in time of crisis. I have a question. Why do all these men follow your leadership? You think they follow because I'm big and loud? No. They follow the rules of the market. The rules of the economy. Because they were... Given a job to do! Oh, You've been talking to him for quite a while now. Something is off with this guy. Ask him where he's from. What's it to you? No. Don't think we've met before. I came to help out the people. We're all workers, right? Workers stick together. Came from the eminent domain. Jamrock. Backgrounds in odd jobs. Heavy lifting. 
Cargo hauling. Bouncer work. I know the drill. Worked at Territorial. Ring a bell. We're done here. I have a strike to break. Hmm, suspicious. Scott? I was just messing with you. No one's ever seen a cop scab. Imagine, you cops going on a strike, but then another cop comes in and says, let us cop for less money. <laughs> Speaking of, what brings the RCM here? To the wild north? Come to see the strife? Murder, huh? That sounds like a lot of hard work. You'd never see me investigating a murder. <laughs> of course, policia. It wasn't me. You can rule me out. Should we? He's nice. He didn't do it. It's the truth. My friend, I respect the right to roam. The open range awaits. I don't operate in that capacity. I'm not a granter of passage. The pa I walk right past Measurehead and go. Yeah, the two and a half meter tall Semini Supremus is there. Walk right past him, then press the button to unlock, then go past him again, and you enter the arbor through the office. Esta. The man whispers a jaunty tune, a coastal breeze. All right. Buddy betrays your degeneracy. Yeah, Measurehead. His body totally betrays his degeneracy. Don't say anything. Size him up first. <laughs> Are you admiring my morphophysiology? must be frightening to stand in the shadow of this racial pinnacle. Be calm and sandwich. You are not in danger because you are not. That is precisely the negligence that has led you to succumb. You reek of it. An invisible sword of al -Hul emerges from your throat. You cannot see it. But others can. It is making the woman in my company sick. No, you don't. You need to get another drink. Occidental Aplo Group B4 is done giving orders around here. The influence of the Am Sandwich Race is waning. Show him the ham still got it. Begging for help. Attempting to pass fear for cooperation. How far the Occidental Ablo group has fallen. You were once a noble and power. You gave the world eugenics, electricity and powerful weapons of war, like missiles and aerostatic aircraft. You dominated lesser cultures, like the deformed Hemians and the inexplicably potato-obsessed Koikos. But now your ascent to the genetic summit has halted. You, you will be superseded. It is, baby, yeah. You know it. There is a button right behind him, just out of reach. It must be the one that opens the door to the harbor. It 
It is my task to keep the degenerate drunks from entering the arbor. Enough with this bet. Bring your troops to the Seminine Islands and to Boogie Street, and we will pulverize you. When the empty walls will be lined with bottles of Al Rul, your beloved beverage. Inside, we will store the oats to homosexuality you call us. Ask what kind of races there are first. Classification is called to this stuff. Do you? There are three categories of race. Tipa, the heroic races. Tipe, the servile races and the vile CF race cauldron of pederasty. Which one do you need an occasion on? Those are the Simonese, the Areopagite, and the Occidentals, excluding the Mao, of course. The Mao are riddled with eczema to the point where they find it impossible to smile. They are all lactose in a receding genetic pool has led the mound on reprehensible street parades. In mound cities like Stads Canal and Vredefort, wearing wooden clogs on their feet and little green tassels on their hats. The Vespertines and Messinians of Vesper and Messina, the ancient Meteorans fought the other large Mondiales as overproduction of seawater, as proven by the Maun and the Mask, Occidental Tip A is in retrograde. The Seminese and the Areopagite are on the ascent. The Areopagites are the latter. Nature was not capable of more. Type B are the unheroic races, amorphous non competitors of the great race. The Koikos and the Vacholier, they are mud colored people. The Koikos of Grad, Yugo, Zimsk, Chest et al. are what you would call white officer in a suspect description. Yes. To an untrained eye, the Koiko appear white and pinkish, like a hand sandwich. But look into their eyes and you will see. They are of an ind- Pinkness is a racial quality that has to be earned through century. The Koiko, the countless micronationalities of Grad, are all inexplicably obsessed with Bodad. The only thing they like more is dividing into Mikopa. The Vasholians. Is it 82,000 years that we've been recording history? You have very little idea of what is happening. But that seems a little off. The mysteries of the people of this planet are a tragedy that has played out countless times over, like a fever dream of skin, hair, and bone. Wake up, naive chess The revolution came to the revolution. Enough of tip. Tips and the F are a museum of failed chimeric experiments. And trad it would be cruel. To entertain ourselves, you understand nothing. To solve the great race enigma, you have to first ask yourself, what is the race enigma? You, you need to internalize you have heard here today, then return to me. This clarity does not come instantly. I cannot possibly imagine what else we have to discuss, Tibet Volumetric ship compressor.
Bizarre scientific news from Revachol West today, where a police officer's shit has been observed at a pressure of around 409. Brain hurts, so that's enough of that. Didn't know this game was gonna lead me into critical race theory at one of the morning, but here we are. It's a wrap. Go to bed. <laughs>